Check this out. This is a simple website that takes XML code and passes it to display content on the screen. If you don't know what XML is, it's a text-based format used to store and transfer data in a structured way. Unlike HTML, which is focused on how data looks, XML is designed to describe what the data actually is. It may look a bit like HTML, but it's not the same. Here, I've added a small XML snippet in this input box. When I click, you can see the values printed on the screen. Now let's make a few changes to the same code and see what happens. After adding a few more lines of XML, the code looks a little different, but let's try running it. As you can see, we're now able to access the content of the password file. This vulnerability is called XML External Entities, or simply XXE. We'll dive deeper into it in just a moment. But before that, if you're new here, make sure to subscribe to the channel and drop a like on this video, because we upload content like this all the time. To understand how this bug works, we first need to go over a little bit of XML. The first line in an XML file is usually the XML declaration. It's optional, but very common. Then we have elements, just like we do in HTML. But the real vulnerabilities start showing up when we introduce things like DTDS or document type definitions. These are defined inside XML code. So, what exactly are they? Well, Imagine we have something we want to repeat multiple times in our XML. Instead of writing it again and again, we can create an entity, basically like a variable, that stores that data and lets us reuse it. Let's look at an example. Here, we've defined an entity called name that stores the value hello world. Now we can use this entity inside any XML tag and it will print that value. But here's the catch. What if, Instead of storing something simple like a name, we make the entity reference a system file, like the slash etc slash password file or the slash etc slash hosts file on Linux. Suddenly, XML will load the content of that file into our entity, and when it gets passed, that sensitive data is displayed right on the web page. And that's basically what XXE XML external entities is all about. This one specifically is called an in-band XXE, but there are a few other types as well. I'll link some resources in the description if you want to dive deeper. Now, XXE doesn't just let us read sensitive files. And yeah, that's already a huge deal, because if someone can read private files, they might be able to grab SSH keys or other secrets and use them to gain access to the system. That was actually the goal in this Try Hack Me room. If you don't know what Try Hack Me is, I recently made a video about it, I'll also drop that link in the description, but besides file reading, XXE can do a lot more. For example, you can use it for SSRF, server-side request forgery, to access internal services like hidden admin pages or API keys, just like the example you see on your screen. Another cool trick is using it for a denial-of-service attack, more specifically, the billion laughs attack. This one overloads the XML parser with recursive entities until it crashes. Again, you can see an example of it on your screen. You can also use XXE for internal port scanning to find out what services are running inside a network. Example of that is also shown on screen. Then there's out-of-band XXE, which lets you exfiltrate sensitive data and send it straight to your own server. And in some cases, if you chain XXE with other misconfigurations, you might even escalate it into remote code execution on the target system. So yeah, XXE is a lot more than just reading slash etc slash pass WD. It can open the door to a whole range of attacks. XXE is mostly found in file upload features. For example, when a site lets you upload files like SVGS, PNGS, or even custom XML configs. In short, XXE usually shows up wherever an application accepts XML input directly or passes XML-based files. So that was a quick breakdown of XXE or XML external entities. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out and keeps us motivated to make more content like this.